Mr. Chairman, respected speaker, and my dear brothers and sisters, the subject is Jesus God can very easily be solved by asking a counter question. Did Jesus claim to be God? Did he say I am God? Did he say worship me? And believe me, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, there is not a single unequivocal statement in any of the 66 books of the Bible or the 73 of, 73 of the Roman Catholics where Jesus says I am God or where he says worship me. There isn't. I would have been very happy to hear Jesus, the, from the lips of Jesus, this simple, straightforward, explicit statement. I am God or worship me. Because I as a Muslim and we Muslims as a whole, we believe that Jesus Christ was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe in his miraculous birth. We believe that he was the Messiah. And we believe that he gave life to the dead by God's permission. And he healed those born blind and the lepers by God's permission. This is really the only point of real difference between the Muslim and the Christian is the divinity of Christ. And for that, I say that our brother has not adduced a single statement from the lips of Jesus saying, I am God or worship him. While he walked this earth, he never made such a statement. Uh, Paul Williams, our uh, apostate Christian turned to Islam, uh, tweeted this article. So I went and looked at it. It's on the Calling Christians to the Truth of Islam uh, blog. And it is by Ijaz Ahmad. The Christian God, non compass mentis. Non compass mentis, a most suitable phrase to describe the behavior of the Judeo Christian God. What truly behooves me has to be the complete change of character from the Old Testament God to that of the New Testament God. Therefore, in my judgment, I have no choice but to deem this God out of his mind. Before I begin to explain my argument, we must first examine the evidences my rationale is based upon. Therefore, let's examine some verses from the Bible. And then there's a number of verses in which God says, I am Yahweh, Genesis 15, 7. I am God Almighty, Genesis 17, 1. I am the God of your father Abraham. In other words, there's a lot of places uh, all the way through Exodus and Genesis where God says, I am Yahweh, do this. I am God, do this. And, of course, you could go into Isaiah and all sorts of places where this is found. The common most frequently repeated statement in the aforementioned verses clearly indicates that in the Old Testament, Yahweh is God. There are no, do, no two ways about it. No one can interpret these verses to be understood that Yahweh is not God. If you open up the Old Testament from Genesis to Zechariah, you will find littered throughout the scriptures declarations by Yahweh that he is God, the eternal everlasting Lord. These statements are frequent, explicit, extant, I'm not sure what that means. Overtly repeated, bold, valiantly declared, boasted, rash, and crystal clear. Almost sounds like he opened up the thesaurus in word at that point and says, what other phrases can we use here? There is no way one can miss these declarations. No one has to find the need to imply that he is God. No one has to interpret an ambiguous verse. No one has to do anything to prove that Yahweh is the God of the Old Testament because, as it is, he says so himself. Okay. Which brings me to my point. What happened to Yahweh? According to the Christian version of events, he came to earth and got tired of declaring himself to be God. There is not a single unequivocal statement. Oh, they just love that. I mean, it's, uh, I wonder if, if Ahmed Didat had any idea when he came up with that line, how many people would become absolute parrots. Just, just rah, not one single unequivocal statement in all the Bible where Jesus says he's God, worship me. It just just repeat it over and over and over and over. Never think about it. Never actually find out whether it's true or not. Just repeat it. Right? There it is. There's Akhmedidat again. There is not a single unequivocal statement in the New Testament where Jesus ever declared himself God as Yahweh did in the many verses above. Isn't that strange? Now let's let's just you know, you know, just step back for a moment. 
And, you know, I just have to say to Ijaz Ahmad, um, you seem to be forgetting a little something. Well, you seem to be forgetting a lot of things. Um, is every single surah of the Quran the same? No. no. Did is it is it not the case that if you read the Quran in a contextual fashion and in a chronological fashion, that you will see a development? that the first portions of the Quran are primarily emphasizing Tawheed, even though that specific term doesn't appear in the Quran, but the Wahad, the oneness of, of Allah over against the polytheists and so on and so forth. Yes, because at that time Muhammad's a minority prophet and, and he's calling the, the Quraysh and, and the Meccans to true worship and trying to expose the errors of polytheism and fighting with the mushrikim and, and all the rest of that stuff. Okay. Makes sense. And later on, once you get to Medina, you've got more stuff about, you know, how the Uma is supposed to is supposed to function and, and stuff like that. And, and it it's it's pretty obvious to see. Okay. That's fine. But does that mean that Muhammad changed and Allah changed? I mean, he doesn't keep repeating the same things over and over again. And, and some surahs are focused on one thing, and, but that surah doesn't contain the exact same stuff that was found in another one. That, that must mean there must be some change. Must be a different God. Well, no, of course not. And you seem to forget that the New Testament doesn't undo the old. The revelation is still considered to be normative. Jesus said anyone who, who, who teaches you that this revelation of God in the Old Testament, that these, these scriptures are no longer binding, they're going to be leased in the kingdom of heaven. So why does God have to just repeat himself all the time? When Jesus comes, um, you have prophecies. Those prophecies identify him as El Gabor and Aviad, Mighty God, Father Eternity, when John comes, he's making straight the way for whom? For Yahweh. The original followers of Jesus identify him with ascriptions of praise and worship and even cite texts of Yahweh in the Old Testament and apply them to Jesus. So is your argument really that Jesus just should have, you know, popped into existence? Well, I, I realize your, your book quotes from Christian fables and says Jesus spoke from his from his cradle and talked. Of course, the Christian fable it's borrowing from, Jesus actually said, I'm the son of God from his cradle, but uh, in your version, he says, I'm, I'm a prophet. And it's even allegedly prophesied, in according to Surah 3. But anyway, uh, is, is he supposed to just sort of pop out with a big sign that says, I'm God, worship me? That's, that's the only way that God could do these things. Is that it? I'm God, worship me. Is that really the only way God could do it? it, it it's not possible that the God-man could come and actually desire to veil his glory. I mean, seriously, if, if you're going to take the perspective you're taking, Jesus should have, the Mount of Transfiguration thing, that shouldn't have just been with three disciples up at the top of a mountain. I mean, if Jesus comes walking in glowing bright to where you can't already even look at him, and he's got Moses and Elijah with him. Hey, everyone's going to go, hey, we, we, we believe. Don't you think maybe there's a reason why God didn't do it that way? Is, is it possible, just, just slightly possible, Ijaz, that God doesn't want to present his son in this fashion? That maybe the idea of faith is to be something other than just simply accepting some massive, overpowering display of glory? I mean, if Jesus took a, a nightly journey around the earth, glowing, and said, believe in me, I'm Jesus, well, that would be highly effective, wouldn't it? Nobody else can do that. 
Jesus comes flying across same time each night, you know, just glowing. I'm Jesus, believe in me. I, I guess that would pretty much make everybody believe, right? That would be great. But that's not what God's chosen to do. Huh? There is not a single unequivocal statement in any of the 66 books of the Bible or the 73 of, 73 of the Roman Catholics where Jesus says, I'm God, or where he says, worship me. 